Hey guys, welcome back to Shep Talk Movie Review. Today, we'll be talking about the Amazon Prime Movie Plus One. But before we get into that review, a couple admin notes. There. As I've mentioned in previous reviews, I am trying to get this channel to 100 subscribers. So if you could please like, share, and subscribe to this channel, it helps me grow greatly and I truly appreciate it. Second, for the month of August, I am doing a giveaway. The details for that giveaway will be at the end of this video. Now, back onto the review. Quick synopsis, plus one focuses on two friends who don't have any significant others, but decide, since it's wedding season, to be each other's plus ones. Right off the bat, we can tell that this is a rom-com that features, focuses pretty much on the two main stars and whether or not they will or will not, you know, end up together by the end of this movie, which isn't a bad thing if done right. And if you bring in an element that that is different from past other movies that have done this trope before over and over again. But the something new in this movie is pretty much just focusing around weddings and wedding receptions, which really isn't a new trope for these types of movies, especially because love is in the air type things. Weddings are always focused in, rom in most of these rom-com type of movies. <laughs> I will say for the leading star, Jack Quaid, this is the second movie, or second review at least in the month of August that I reviewed a Jack Quaid led production. The first one, which I'll hopefully put in, remember to put up in the cards up in this section, is the boys TV show from Amazon Prime. Um, I did a review, so again, hopefully I'll remember to put it up in the cards. But Jack plays Ben in this movie, and Ben is one of those people that ha wants to find that perfect one. She's got to check all the boxes, and, and if she doesn't check the boxes, then Ben lets her go. One of those boxes was, uh, one of the X's that they explained in this movie was um, she didn't laugh at his jokes. They'd only been dating for three weeks and Ben was like, you know what? Can't happen. Bye. See you later. Bye, Felicia. And the second star in this movie is Maya Erskine, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who plays Alice, whose main thing at the beginning of this movie is that she was just dumped by her boyfriend, Nick. And so she's, I guess the best pick me up for her was to go to a wedding instead of just ditching the wedding. So, but she's the one. And then of course at this wedding and wedding reception, she just decides to get, you know, blind drunk. But I guess the good thing that came out of it was that she's realized because that, Hey, her and Ben are good friends and supposedly all their friends are getting married this summer. Why not be each other's plus one? So that way they no longer sit at the singles table. And, you know, and as well as they can be each other's wingman. On a side note, Alice is probably one of the best and worst wingman at the, <laughs> wingman at the same time for this movie. Her idea of connecting Ben with, up with these women at, <laughs> at a wedding is usually involving some physical altercation to start, jumpstart a conversation, which seems to work for Ben, but it's just like, it's one of those things, it's like, you don't always need to like spill a drink or beat someone over the head or trip your partner into this, you know, this other woman to, you know, <laughs> make these introductions. But in this movie, it seems to work and it does, you know, help Ben out, I guess, in this movie a little bit. And focusing on some of the problems <laughs> in this movie, is that especially now that we know that it's focusing on weddings and the receptions, it's the simple fact that we got, they, they make us sit through the best man and you know maid of honor speeches and they're not good speeches pretty much 99 percent of these speeches are bad and in this movie i think they hit us over the head with weddings and receptions like 20 times in this movie and speaking on those weddings i think the writers knew that they had a, they they were going to do a lot of weddings and what i imagine in this this writer's room is that they put on a wall like all these themed weddings and whenever they got to a scene where they like, oh, need another theme for another wedding, they threw a dart board or dart at it, and whichever theme they landed on, that was the theme that they put in this wedding. Because again, we have 20 weddings in this movie or something along those numbers. It seems like a god awful amount of weddings and speeches that we sat through that we had, they had to have new backgrounds for all these weddings. So they had to keep thinking up new ideas of new themes for these weddings. Because of course, if we had to put up with these bad speeches, we had to could be looking at the same reception hall for an hour and a half. And I also get it. We're going to weddings from Alice and Ben's side. You know, both of their friends or their pool of friends are getting married. And that's why we have all these weddings. But God damn, did they all decide to get married in the same year and in the same season? Because I swear to God in this movie, it's like every weekend there's another wedding. 
I'm, you know, it made me think, be glad that, you know, halfway through this movie, I was like, I'm glad half my friends don't invite me to their weddings because if, <laughs> you know, if I'm going to, if every weekend is going to be a wedding, I wouldn't be able to get anything done that I wanted to do. And, you know, I'd have to pick and choose and be like, ah, no, sorry, Jake, I'm not going to your wedding this weekend because I just need a break from the 15 other weddings I had to go, to have to go to this season. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this. I don't think that's a spoiler. Um, it's this type of movie we get all the time. Ben and Alice finally do hook up. They finally do become a couple. And yes, everything seems to be working along greatly, but then one of them decides they have commitment issues or they there's something going on in their mind so they can't have their truly happy ending. It's it's a trope that happens all the time. There's got to be some conflict between these two even when they get together, so that way they're split apart, so that way there's some kind of reconciliation towards the end of this movie. And I think it's just stupid to see people been together for the first hour of this movie, weekend after weekend. They've been drunk, they've been high, they've been going out and they've been doing stuff. You, I get it, they weren't starting out as a couple. They had an agreement with each other. But at the point of the movie where things are getting serious, instead of talking it out and having a real conversation, they split up the thing. One of them is just like, I can't handle this anymore. I, we, I gotta go my separate ways. And then of course that then brings in the, the person that's doing it, that broke up with them, does that deep reflection. It's like, oh my God, they were the one for me without, no matter what flaws I was seeing in this relationship, I did love them for what they brought, with, for what they brought to the table, for how they made me feel, how they made me act, how I changed when I was around them. And again, that's this rom-com kind of trope. It sucks because you, if it's done, if it's done well, you don't mind it. But as you can probably tell in this my my review, it just it wasn't done well. It wasn't handled good. There wasn't no. You saw this coming from a mile away. They pretty much wrote it like in the first scene of this movie, how this, how the conflict was going to happen towards the end of this movie. And overall, the writing or the acting in this movie wasn't the greatest. Having seen these actors in previous iterations, especially with Jack just having you know a grand slam in the boys, I have to give it to the writers. I fault I have to fault the writers for giving us something, or giving these actors not enough to do with, or not giving them enough motivation for these characters to really give us more I like I really didn't connect with my or with Alice or Ben they were all right their chemistry was all right on camera but it just it was lacking I it, it, there was they were just towards the finish line but we they didn't cross it they didn't bring us into this movie I didn't feel anything for this movie I knew what I was going to as soon as the you know the movie started I knew what was coming there was nothing really new or fresh with this movie so with that being said guys i give plus one two out of five chefs there was glimmers of stuff in there yes that's why i'm not giving it a one it wasn't terrible wasn't bad bad but it's just it's not there's tons of other movies out there that have done this trope better and I would have rather watched those than come back and watch Plus One again. All right, guys, thank you very much for sticking around. Like I said before at the beginning of this movie, at the beginning of this review, I am doing a giveaway for the month of August. It is for a signed 8x10 um, photo of Michael Shanks, who's best known for playing Dr. Daniel Jackson in Stargate SG-1. How do you enter, you ask? There's only three things I'm asking you to do. First, is be a subscriber to my channel. And I'm asking you, if you have your subscription set to private, please set them to public so that way I can verify that you are a subscriber to my channel. And the details for that will be in the description below. Two, share this video. I, like I said at the beginning, I'm trying to get to 100, uh, 100 subscribers. So whenever you share, like, or subscribe to my channel, it does help the YouTube algorithm get my channel out there. And I greatly appreciate it. Three, let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite rom-com movie? And as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next review.